Welcome back everybody. Well yesterday big news dropped about Nvidia and export restrictions to China. So let's take a quick listen. Okay there Melissa. Yeah shares down about three and a half percent right now. This is after a 8K filing Nvidia just filed saying they uh, heard from the uh, U.S. government last week saying they need a license to sell H20 chips to China. H20 chips are the ones that were supposed to kind of skirt around some of the most advanced uh, features and be able to be sold into China. Uh, that is not happening now, or at least they need a licensing process for it. And now NVIDIA says they expect to take a five and a half billion dollar charge because of the inventory they have stacked up there. You see shares moving down three and a half percent now, Melissa. OK, so what's actually going on here? Well, let's take a look at the AK filing and see what it says ourselves. Now, on April 9th, they were notified by the U.S. government that they needed licenses to export to China, including Hong Kong and Macau and D5 countries or to companies headquartered or with an ultimate parent therein. And this is exclusively about their H20 integrated circuits and any other circuits achieving the H20's memory bandwidth, interconnect bandwidth, or combination thereof. And specifically, it says that they indicated that the license requirement addresses the risk that the covered products may be used in or diverted to a supercomputer in China. And then lastly, on April 14th, the U.S. government informed the company that the license requirement will be in effect for the indefinite future. So, on the surface, you're like, wow, okay, that's not great. Basically, it means that the H20, which was literally the best NVIDIA chip that they were allowed to sell to China, is now being restricted. And if you guys remember, the H20 was what was used with the whole DeepSeek R1 training, which became big news at the beginning of the year. And so what we have here is now NVIDIA saying that the company's first quarter fiscal year 2026 ends April 27, 2025. And first quarter results are expected to include up to approximately 5.5 billion of charges associated with H20 products for inventory purchase commitments. So they expect a $5.5 billion hit in this quarter coming up basically because of these changes by the U.S. government. And if you didn't know, the H20 is basically NVIDIA's pared down version of the H100 GPU. And so now they're actually rolling out Blackwell. And so the H20 is actually a version behind. But still, it's one of the best performing GPUs out there on the market. And it was the only one that was allowed to be exported to China until last week. Now, in terms of the short term financials, NVIDIA reports their earnings in May. So a month from now. But obviously, their quarter ends at the end of April, which is just in a couple weeks. And they've already said they expect to have about a $5.5 billion impact. And so that's definitely the short-term impact. That's probably why they did the AK filing, just to let everybody know ahead of time so it's not a surprise and the market can kind of digest this information. But let's talk about longer term. Now, if we take a look at their most recent 8K, we can see that they break down their revenue by geographic region. And now currently in their latest fiscal year, China amounted to about 13% of their total revenue. And you know, you say 13%, that's not insignificant, obviously, but it has actually been trending down. Because if we look at previous years, we can see that in the 2024 fiscal year, it was actually around 17%. And then in the 2020, 23 fiscal year, it was actually around 21%. So on the surface, you might say, okay, well, it's not as bad as it could have been because at least China revenue has been decreasing as the total percentage of NVIDIA's overall revenue. But that's not quite the whole story. Because what you notice is that the revenue from Singapore has actually been accelerating over the past three years, where back in 2023, it started as around eight and a half percent of their total revenue, and then jumped all the way up to about 18% of their total Total revenue in the last fiscal year. And you might be like, okay, well, why is that significant when it comes to China? Now, I'm not going to go over all the conspiracy theories that you see online and people talking about the revenue from Singapore and all that type of stuff. But NVIDIA does kind of explain it here in their 10K. It says geographic revenue based upon customer billing location. And then specifically for Singapore, there's a footnote that says Singapore represented 18% of fiscal year 2025 total revenue based upon customer billing location. Customers use Singapore to centralize invoicing while our products are almost always shipped elsewhere. Shipments to Singapore were less than 2% of fiscal year 2025 total revenue. 
And this is where a lot of people kind of start their conspiracy theories about, well, it's Chinese companies that are using a Singapore billing address, but they're really being shipped to China. Now, this has kind of been debunked, at least by the company of saying, you know, according to them, they don't believe that that's what's happening. And I'm not going to get into the if that's true or not, because we just don't really know. But there are legitimate business reasons for companies to have their billing address in Singapore and have their GPUs shipped elsewhere. I mean, even our cloud providers like Amazon, Microsoft and Google have instances of this. But what I will say is that, yes, Singapore is a finance hub and people do consolidate things there with their billing address there. So it almost definitely will include some companies that are headquartered or based in China, right? So what that means is that not only is this China line item that represents 13% of their total revenue potentially at risk, but the Singapore line item, which is 18% of their total revenue, at least a portion of that may also be at risk because you're going to have some overlap where you have companies there that are based in China or headquartered in China, or if we actually go back to the AK filing, we see that they do already call it out by saying, or to companies headquartered or with an ultimate parent therein. So I take that as meaning that this $5.5 billion expected hit includes companies that are part of that China-based revenue, but also companies that are part of maybe the Singapore revenue, but are actually headquartered in China. So not that $5.5 billion is nothing and we should be happy about it, but I'm guessing that that probably represents the total short-term impact for the upcoming quarter, at least what they expect. And we'll just kind of have to see what the numbers actually look like. But the question is, what does this mean for NVIDIA long-term? And one thing that I thought was really interesting yesterday is even long-term NVIDIA bull Jim Cramer is now starting to think differently. I mean, I put out a piece uh, yesterday that was quite painful for me to write to the club members. And it was, I do a big Sunday think piece, and it was about how you could no longer trust the government in NVIDIA. You could just no longer do it, so therefore you can't own it like you used to, meaning you have to trim. And I said, I'm going to have to sell some. Uh, and one of the reasons I did it, well, it turns out just this very evening without any, any notice, different from even when I talked about at the top of the show, the uh, government decided, you know what, we're going to put new restrictions on the H20, which is the dumbed down version of the uh, latest and greatest NVIDIA trip. Trip. And it's really kind of shocking. But is it really? I wrote that piece because I expect stuff like this to happen. And NVIDIA is going to have a big charge. It's a different world. Uh, NVIDIA gives a huge amount of money, decides to build as much here like Apple. It buys them nothing. It isn't All that I know is that if you do a lot of business in China, and, and if you're a club member, you know this, then your stock's going to suffer. And that includes now NVIDIA, too. So even Jim Cramer, who's been pumping NVIDIA for I don't know how many years, is now saying that it's not a stock you can just own because the government's doing this stuff, and he's even going to trim his own position. And so in terms of what the market thinks about it, now, as of this morning on Wednesday morning, it's down 6% in early morning trading, down to about 105. And I mean, it's been you know, all the way down to the low 90s here over the past month or so, or just the past couple of weeks. So obviously, the market is taking this as a negative signal, which makes a lot of sense. But, you know, NVIDIA and a lot of these tech stocks have already kind of been on a downtrend. So the question is, is this a continuation of that? Or is this really the market digesting new information and the sign of things to come? It's really hard to tell. But let's talk about what the possible outcomes of this news are. Now, if we choose to be optimistic and say, what is the best possible outcome for this? I think it's that revenue is impacted in the short term or maybe just delayed, but will come back. And how that can actually happen is, well, one, you know, maybe this license process is actually legit and it just means that companies need to get approved or NVIDIA needs to get them approved and then they can ship their existing H20s. Now, in my opinion, this is highly unlikely to happen because even the previous restrictions that were in place had a license requirement. And my understanding is that zero licenses were approved since that got put in place. But another option is that NVIDIA could create a kind of lower performing chip that meets the export criteria. Now that's kind of worse than the H20. And maybe that would be bought up by some Chinese companies that are still interested in that type of product. Now, again, I would call this unlikely because there was already a push going on by the Chinese government to have Chinese companies buy domestic providers of GPUs products instead of NVIDIA's. So, you know, if there was a worse product than the H20 that they were trying to sell, I just, I don't know how much they would actually have an interest in that. 
And then lastly, NVIDIA orders could actually get picked up in other geographic regions due to the extra supply created by export restrictions to China. And this to me seems like the most likely option that revenue can kind of bounce back after a short adjustment period. Because at the end of the day, NVIDIA products are in extremely high demand. And if this opens up a little bit extra supply that wasn't normally there, then maybe other companies or countries kind of get in the NVIDIA mix and have the ability to buy some GPUs. But now let's look at the other side of this coin in terms of what the worst possible outcome could be. And I think this is where the revenue is impacted for the foreseeable future because of this change. And now how this can happen is obviously number one, no licenses can get approved or two, the Singapore revenue is actually heavily impacted as well, maybe more than we expect it to be. And then three, demand in other areas doesn't actually make up for what's lost or there be becomes more of a competition around the world as these new chips come out and there's just less and less demand over time. And along those lines, the restrictions of the H20s to China just incentivizes China more to innovate in the chip area to where they create more long-term competition for NVIDIA as well. And when you look at that list, I mean, none of those things are crazy ideas, right? Those are things that could definitely happen or at least some partial combination of them could definitely happen. And we just have to see what impact that'll have on NVIDIA long-term. All right, so what are my overall thoughts on this? Now, obviously right off the bat, it's disappointing when news like this hits one of your companies and kind of tanks the stock, especially in the short term. But if you've watched this channel for a while, you know I've been pretty consistent with what I've said about Nvidia and why I actually hold it in my portfolio. And that's anyone who wants to win in AI, whether it's a company or a country, has to go through Nvidia. There isn't a product that can match what their products can do. And to me, these export restrictions actually kind of validate that idea even more. So if I go back to why I bought Nvidia in the first place, they had the best product in the most important growth industry. They have customers who have a lot of money, which is top tech firms and even governments. And they're leading an unbelievably strong secular trend of AI adoption. And honestly, the reason why I focus on secular trends is because of this type of stuff. I mean, look, I can't predict macro, I can't predict governments, and I can't predict stock prices. But I feel that companies that are clear winners when it comes to strong secular trends will ultimately do well because that trend is happening. And to me, this is where taking a step back and trying to look at the big picture can be helpful. It's the same thing I did when all the deep seek drama came out and everybody was freaking out. But you have NVIDIA where one of their products, even a dumbed down version, is so valuable that we have to restrict them from being exported to a certain country, right? You have an AI trend that in my opinion is closer to the beginning than it is to the end. And while I have no idea what this change is gonna do to NVIDIA's revenue for this next quarter or next year or even next four years, Honestly, it's going to be hard for me to say that NVIDIA, when all the dust clears, isn't going to be a winner when I do believe that AI is coming and they're the producer of the most critical component, along with TSMC, of course, of that secular trend. And the way that I look at being a retail investor is the benefit I have over some professional fund manager is I don't need to hit certain benchmarks or answer any investors every single year about my performance. Like I'm okay waiting to see what happens with their revenue, maybe waiting a few quarters, seeing what that story is from the company in terms of are they seeing increased demand from other places? Is that kind of replacing whatever they lost in China or even the Singapore based revenue? And that's just something that we just don't know yet yet and we have to see. So at least for me, I don't plan to sell my Nvidia shares and I'm going to just kind of wait and see what the impact is before I overreact to something. Because ultimately the reason why I bought Nvidia in the first place is still there just with some unfortunate restrictions with all the geopolitics going around. But this is also why I've said that Nvidia is not a stock for people who are unsure of why they bought it or just trying to hop on a trend because it'll test your nerve and your stomach pretty much weekly. And if you're not sure why you bought it or what you're evaluating to know whether you should stay in or get out, then it's going to be really hard to deal with because you're going to be constantly tested and stressed with all the news that comes out. And to me, this is another in a long line of headlines and noise and everyone's gonna have strong polarizing opinions, but at least until I see something more definitive from the company that makes me think this is gonna be an ongoing issue, I'm gonna stay the course. So what do you all think about the export restrictions and what it means long-term for Nvidia? Let me know down in the comments below. Now, if you wanna see my detailed breakdown of the DeepSeek R1 drama, you can watch that by clicking this video right here. Hope you guys have a great day out there. Financial independence is true freedom. So keep building and stacking wins. And I'll see you on the next one. Peace. <laughs>